Good afternoon. This is the lab recording that goes along with exercise 8, the overview of the skeleton, classification and structure of bones and cartilage. What we'll be looking at this in this lab for the most part is reviewing the bone model that is shown uh, in figure 8.4 in your lab book on page 113. Now the model that I'll be showing you is slightly different in organization to the diagram that's shown, but it has all of the same information, and you will see the same model in the practice anatomy lab. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at the organization of compact bone. So here is our model. Now what you can imagine this model is, right? I'm going to show you from all dimensions. Right? Notice it has almost a pie shape. So what this is, if you imagine taking a long bone, and you slice the long bone down the middle and took a section out of it. This would be, over here, this would be the inner part of the bone, which is the medullary cavity. This would be the outer part of the bone where you have the periosteum. Right? The periosteum is this layer of dense regular connective tissue on the outside, the inside an osteogenic layer that surrounds the bone. Right? Now the organization, the basic organization of bone is what are called osteons. So if I turn the model in this perspective, you can see that we have these circular structures. Right? Each of these circular structures, which have just been pulled out for the model, is an osteon. An osteon is made of repeating concentric circles, and between each of these circles we have layers of osteocytes. Osteocytes are the mature bone cells. Okay? So this osteon structure, here is one osteon, here are another, that are just pulled out. Okay? All of these circular structures shown in the model would be osteons. Now at the center of each osteon we have this fairly large opening which you can see on the microscope slides that we have. This is the central canal. Now looking in the cross section, the central canal is actually much clearer to see. So these running up and down, these are the central canals, also called the Haversian canals, and these have blood vessels. And what these do, these have blood vessels that travel in the center of each osteon and they bring blood supply and nervous innervation throughout the bone. So bones have both blood supply and nerves. That's why breaking a bone is so painful. Right. Now connecting each of these osteons to each other, we have these side-to-side -side channels. Right? These are called perforating canals, also called Volkmann's canals. They also have blood supply in them. Now on this side of the model we have what all look like all of these little dots. These are representing the osteocytes. Okay. The osteocytes sit inside each of the circular circular region, so if we go a little bit closer on one of these osteons, you can see that each osteon is made of these rings, rings inside one another. Okay? Each ring is called a lamella. The lamellae are made from the osteo, originally the osteoblasts and then maintained by the osteocytes. So in between each of these layers is where you would see the cells, the actual osteocytes. So if we take a look at a different representative. Here we have the two, two lamellae, two lamellae, two lamellae kind of lined up. And so you can see that's where you would find osteocytes right there. Now this is a fairly important model because it allows you to see the, um, the larger structures that you would find in compact bone. Now in addition, if we turn it this way and look, as I said, this is what would face in towards the center of the bone or the medullary cavity. That medullary cavity is going to have um, an open space where in adults we would see yellow bone marrow, in young um, infants and in fetuses this would be red bone marrow. Right? This is also going to be spongy bone. Right? So this spongy bone is going to be um, much more loose, it's also called trabecular bone, much more loosely organized. It is not squishy as the word spongy might mean, spongy just means full of holes. Right? This also has a very thin uh, connective tissue that covers it that is called the endosteum. So we have the periosteum on the out outermost aspect and the endosteum. So just to show you an example of this in a bone, this would be a section bone. Now this is not a human bone, um, this is probably a cow bone. But just to show you this compact bone, this is a section bone. Right? So you can see that the inside portion here is hollow. This would be the medullary cavity. Right? At the ends of the bones, we have spongy bone. So I bring this close to the camera, you can see that here we have this spongy or woven bone look. You can also clearly see a line that runs here. That line is where the 
epiphysis fuses with the diaphysis. So in a growing bone and in a human growing bone, we would call this the epiphyseal plate. Once that matures, that will become the epiphyseal line. If you take a look, you can see throughout here, this spongy bone is where we would have blood vessels um, and we would have the red bone marrow. The medullary cavity, the open space, right? so where this model that we just saw comes from is if you could imagine clipping a little piece out right here, that would be the compact bone. I'm going to hold this up really close to the camera. Right? And you can see if we took a section of that out and then we're able to blow it up really big so we can see it, that would be the model that we just saw. Right? So this is an example of a sectioned bone.